Hey, Sam, what's up? Hey, Dr. John. I'm stoked to talk to you, man. This is uh, surreal. I'll jump right into my question, then we can dig into well, it. Hold on. It's surreal. Um, I don't get to talk to okay. Houstonians very often. I got to talk to these Nashvillians. It's good to talk to you. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited. I, I've listened to your show for, gosh, I found it in like December, and I've listened to everything for the last year and a half. And just to hear your voice, it's, it's so surreal. Well, it's an honor to talk to you. So what's up? Uh, so my question today is how do I best love and support a good friend who came out as being transgender? Um, so a little bit of backstory on it. Uh, we grew up, so she's transitioning from a female to a man. Okay. Um, we, we grew up in church together. We played on the same hockey team, um, youth group did all that. Um, and I, I'm struggling with how to. I guess best accept accept her decision first off, and then how do I like support and love her? I, I don't even know if it's politically correct to say her, him, uh, her as she goes through this this transition because I, I've gone through and talked to people who I value their opinion, and I, they kind of look at me with deers and headlights, and I've never been through <laughs> a situation like this before, and, it, it, and it's, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, uh, uh, it's super and I uncomfortable. just want to be there. Yeah. Um, uh, what name is your friend going by? Joey. Okay, so I'm going to call Joey Joey. Have you asked Joey, what's the best way I can love and honor you through this transition? No. That's where I would start. Okay. And having been in your exact situation, um, I would also hope that your friendship is strong enough. And I'm a, I, I'm a pretty much, I just, I'm pretty open. And my friends sometimes have shaken their heads over the years and be like, oh, John, please don't say that ever again like that. But they know me and they love me. Um, I would say, hey, I'm going to get some of this wrong. And I'm going to ask that as you're going through this really tough time, know that I love you. And I'm going to do the best I can to say the right things and to speak the right things. And this is weird for me too. And okay. allowing that person to go, of course, absolutely. And then be able to walk along. And if the friend says, if you say it wrong, I'll know what you really believe. Then they are moving away from your friendship. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And so for sure. I I think oh, anytime it, anytime so transgender I mean it's it's not as third rail as it was just, you know, a year ago, but let's let's remove transgender from the conversation and let's make it something a little like more benign. Um I don't like, let's just take a traditional vanilla husband and wife, okay? Mhm. Mm if you listen to this show, you hear me say this all the time. Like, hey, how do I love my wife or how do I love my husband? I don't know. Ask them. What's the best way I can love you today? And so I think that we often try to, we think love looks like showing up and saying the right thing and doing the exact right thing and always being right on the right thing. And I think love is, is before that. I think love is A, I'm not going anywhere. I'm your friend. I love you. And love is, um, hey, I'm going to screw this thing up. This is a big change, a big transition, no pun intended. Like, this is big. And um, I'm going to accidentally call you your previous name. I'm not going to mean to, but I'm, 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 we've got a long history together. Like, I love you, and we're going to figure this thing out. Um, and also, how, how can I best love and support you? And then you have to decide, Sam, do any of those requests for love and support violate your values? Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think I, I probably got one of, you used this saying a lot where like what you had before is over and you need to make something new. Yeah. Um, I, I've kind of tried to think, think about it that way to where, Hey, this isn't the same as what it was, but I want to build something new, which you usually say that in marriage relationships, but but you, I, hey, I think kind of, Sam, you are right on. That happens at work. That happens in our friendships. That happens with our kids. Rebuilding something new happens everywhere, all the time. And I, and I, I love that application. So, 
unfortunately we live in a world where if you ask a question, you're somehow demeaning. And I think questions are the most honoring thing. Like it's the most honoring hot way to show hospitality. Tell me your story. Tell me about you. How do you, what's the right way to say this? Right. And when I was working with college groups, man, I had close, close friends that had different political beliefs that were gay, straight, transgender. And I would ask like, Hey, what's the right way to say this? I'm getting ready to go speak to the student group. And they were so honoring. They would, they'd be like, Hey, say it like this, like this, not like this. And then I, I remember having one friend and she would say, Oh, Hey, it changed. Don't say that. Say that. Right. That was such a gift. And I was trying to be hospitable. I wasn't running through the world like a bull in a China shop being like, it's going to be my way. And this is the right. So I think everybody's got a right to safety and right to love. And these kind of things are messy and hard. How long have y'all been friends? Uh, about 20 years. Okay. So I'm, I'm 25 and she's 25 too. Okay. So it's, it's like, it's like your best bud from, from, or from childhood. And it's, it's so different. Yeah. It's so different. And can I give you permission? It's okay to grieve. What was it's different now. It's just mm-hmm. different. And also give you permission to explore what this new friendship is going to be like, but it's going to be different. What are the things you're most nervous what I, about? What I, well, I don't want to, like, I feel like she's been ostracized by her family. Mm. Um, and she's a, she's a teacher. So she's gotten a lot of backlash from children's parents who yep. they're like, I don't want to be in his class. Like, I don't want that being an example for my, my kid. Mm-hmm. And I, I just know how prevalent mental health and suicide has the potential to be, especially in the LGBT community mm-hmm. um, and the, the adverse challenges they face um, more so than myself. And I just want to make sure she's okay. And I think that your, your willingness to love a friend going through a tough time. Like, so again, let's take transgender off the table. Somebody goes to work and all of the students, kids say, we don't want that person not around my kid. Like just all, all humanity, put yourself in that boat. Mm Mm-hmm. Like that would feel hollow, especially if you're a teacher and you're decided to like make your entire living making less money, like all that. It's just, it's a hard time. And so your choice to say, Hey, I don't know what you're going through. And even, even go this far. I don't, I don't even like from the outside, I don't even think this is the right decision for you, but it's not my decision to make. You, you're your close friends. You're 25. I mean, you're 20 year friends. You only get a few chances in life to have 20 year friends. So you get to have opinions about your friends. Right. Uh For a friend like that. And I've got opinions about my friends and they got opinions about me. Um, But your choice to say, Hey, you are never alone. And I'm going to sit here with you. I can agree with you all the time, but you're never going to go through life unloved. I'll tell you that right now. And if you are worried about that person's about Joey's safety, you let them know, I'm going to call 911 every single time. Every time. Because you're my 20-year friend. You're not dying on my watch. And mm-hmm. I'm going to continue showing up, and I'm going to continue showing up, especially when it's hard. And nothing about Joey's path moving forward is going to be easy. Zero percent. None. And I think you're right. Like, families ostracize you, work ostracize. It's tough. It's a tough, it's a tough, tough road. And so just being a friend that says, hey, I'm going to check in on you. I'm going to text you. It's tough, but I'm going to be that friend. Does that feel, does that feel, and, and again, that doesn't mean you have to subscribe to every belief. That doesn't mean you have to, I mean, you don't have to go along with things you don't feel comfortable going along with, all that. But you can be there. Mm-hmm. Does that feel like something you can do? Or are you concerned that you don't want to be there either? Well, I think the, the advice that I had been given is more kind of the relationships ran its course. And to me, that felt like yeah, that, that language, was that, that language that is stupid. My value. Yeah. That language is stupid. I don't believe that uh, relationships quote unquote run their course. People opt out. People mm-hmm. opt out. And, um, if somebody did something that you find morally reprehensible and you choose to not be their friend anymore, that relationship didn't run its course. 
one person made a choice and so the other person made a choice. Mm-hmm. But that's a decision grown-ups make to end relationships and just run their course. I just don't like that language because it, it 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 makes things seem inevitable and few things are inevitable. Adults make choices. Adults put up boundaries. Adults make value decisions and value judgments. So yeah, I, I mean, that just ran its course. That's a way for people to not have to make hard decisions about staying with people saying, Hey, I can't be a part of this decision you're making. And so I wish you the best and I love you, but I'm often out like just ran its course. That's a, that's a, that's a way to shirk responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And can I just say, I know this isn't PC or politically, whatever, whatever you say it these days, you're allowed just to be sad that, your life was going one way and then now it's going to be different. Mm-hmm. I you're, think you're grieving is a little bit do of I, it. Like, do, do what, Sam? I think grieving is a, is a piece of it too, where mm-hmm. I need to kind of sit in it too and feel like I lost what we had. Um, because she was like, she was a beautiful, like girl, awesome in every way. Um, so there was a little bit of like, attraction there if that makes sense like we never dated or anything but it it's like oh sam you just threw a wrinkle man were you gonna i <laughs> did i'm sorry <laughs> dude you gotta lead with that next time <laughs> well oh yeah it's it's a lot yeah it's more more it's a wrinkle okay. um have you told like, joey how you feel no I think that's a vulnerability that I don't think I ever can can do. <laughs> Not after twenty years of friendship. Not after this change. Like she's she's opted out on that. Like like and this I'm not trying to use the run its course, but she opted out of that opportunity or that development. And I think that's partly why I I needed to open it up a little bit more and feel comfortable to, to say that. Um, because it's it's hard. Um and it's it's not what I had hoped wanted. I, I don't I don't I hoped it would be. There we go. And grief is the gap between what we wanted or hoped and what actually happened. And I'll tell you, my hope for you is at some point, um Secrets will kill a 20 year friendship. Just talk. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a big reveal, but um, I don't know. I, I, I I don't know. I have to think on that one. I have to think on that one, but you you get to make whatever choice you want to make, Sam. Obviously you're, you're an adult. Uh You can make whatever choice you want to make. Um, but to circle all the way back to the, your beginning question, I think anybody who's making changes, but especially somebody who's making changes that's costing them potentially their job, their family, their friends, is to ask, man, how can I, how can I love you today? How can I show up? And if you ever think all this is too much, please call me. Okay. And um, I think that's a great step, and I kind of was looking past the the first easy action item is just asking like, yeah. and part of being uncomfortable is sitting there and not knowing what to say. But if I could just put the ball in her court and say, Hey, how can I show up for you? Yeah. What do you need? Um, how can I support you? Think things like that to where it's, it's clearing the air to a certain extent to where I'm putting, I, I'm showing up as a friend. Well, and Sam, um, part of this is calling out, like I, I mentioned earlier, part of it is calling out the future awkwardness. Let's just put it on the table. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, so if a friend of mine who I'd known for 20 years was married and that friend suddenly calls and says, hey, I'm getting divorced. What I had known, my friend of 20 years, was as an entity, right? And they're getting divorced now. And I would tell them, hey, I'm going to call your new girlfriend the wrong name. 
just expect that. Like, I'm not going to do it on purpose, and I'm going to do my best, but I'm going to mess that up. Like, I'm just going to put it on the table. And I'm going to say, hey, I'm asking for pre-grace right now. I'm going to say this the wrong way, and I might think this is funny, and it's not, or I might not think something's funny, and, you, and it's it, it. Like, I am learning at square zero, but I don't want you to doubt my love for you. I want I want you to be okay. I want you to be better than okay. I want you to be well. And I know the path for you moving forward is very hard. And so there's just something about putting everything on the table and all the awkward, all the, hey, I'm not going anywhere. Or if you are, Sam, you got to be honest. If you say, hey, I can't mm-hmm. ride, I can't ride with you any further. This is okay. as far as I can go. You owe it to the person in your life not to be fake because everyone's going to be fake. Mm-hmm. If you're going to make a value judgment, you're going to have to own that value judgment. And you can't default to something like, well, just, just kind of ran this court. No, I'm opting out. But everybody is worth telling the truth. And everybody's worth integrity. And everybody's worth kindness and safety. I just believe that in my guts. And everybody deserves to put all the awkward on the table and say, hey, this is going to be awkward. And everybody deserves grace, especially during big changes and transitions. And I just want to tell you, Sam, I appreciate the question. I appreciate you asking, hey, how do I navigate moving forward correctly? And if you find that your feelings for who this person used to be are too strong, put that on the table and say, hey, this is a barrier between us. And put on the table. But I'm really grateful that you called and said, how can I best love somebody who's making such a big, big change? Um, the easy thing to do is to just to write people off and walk away. It's hard to sit down and say, I don't know how to love you, but I want to. Will you teach me? That's scary and that's hard. I'm really grateful for the call, Sam. Thank you so, so much. And uh, call anytime if I can ever uh, be of service. Take care.